Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey the Rulers, DMO73 here, bringing you a feature match for the week between Justin Seals and Paul Clute. So these guys were paired up at our locals last week, and Justin is playing um, an interesting take on Melgus. Uh, <laughs> the joke was that it's fast Melgus versus slow Melgus. Paul uh, is work works for Odyssey Games, uh, and so he wanted to be able to end his matches quickly, uh, either quickly winning or quickly losing. Um, and so he wanted to play this fast Melgus. And so he's playing against Justin, who's playing a slow Melgus. So we'll kind of see who comes out on top. So Melgus has been known to, if it gets really lucky, can burst out a lot of damage very, very quickly, especially with its uh, lucky flips off of strangers. But also you have something like Shakti plus Awakening of the Flame King to be able to burn for 16 damage very quickly. So if you get some early game chips in, especially against another Melgus deck that's not going to have any kind of life gain, suddenly you can just be like, well, the game's over and move on from there. So Paul is going to be on the play here. Go ahead and call his first stone. It's a heat ray. Get a red Percival out. Look at the top five. Grab a regalia. Or reveal the top five of a regalia or a fire resonator or two or less. Looks like we're probably going to be grabbing red Shakti, most likely. Also playing Firefox. Choosing to grab the Firefox. Probably setting up for next turn, being able to push in for a lot of damage. Firefox is an interesting tool as well, especially if you're playing strangers or things, um, the strangers that want your life to be 2,000 or less, um, like Chuchulain or something like that. So we're, we're going to have a Levitin on Justin's side. We're going to use the modes to, um, I think, get a stranger and burn the Percival for five. Um, or sorry, make the token. And then swing in, and he's just going to go ahead and... Uh, oh, no, burn for five, I suppose. And so he's going to, in response to that, go ahead and banish the Percival to deal 200 damage to Justin. So we're going to get that random stranger there. See, we got a Regulus. That's a pretty good stranger to hit. Obviously, you prefer to hit that off of the Melgus flip, um, just because it has that swiftness. But next turn, that card is going to potentially be playable uh, and swing in for a cool grand of damage. So... Paul's still looking to try to get started here. See that Lancelot in his hand. Also, he's got the Firefox. Looks like there might be a Thunder. He also has a Leviton of his own. I think there's some justification here to playing the Lathe. Um, or maybe just holding it for next turn where you can potentially flip. Maybe Lancelot, or if he's got Firefox plus another one drop, that might be best. Ultimately, does decide to play the Lave here. Gonna get the 7-1 token and a Stranger, I can only imagine. Uh, his opponent's board is completely clear. Might as well go for it. Swinging in for the seven, takes Justin down to 31. And nothing else there at the end of the turn, so the token is just going to die. Justin not having anything to do during the upkeep, um, hitting a heat rate as his stone call for turn. Um, I think there's some justification here to playing the Regulus, swinging in, and then playing potentially the Red Percival, um, just to get some crackback damage, as well as put a threat that he doesn't really want to kill off the board. Um, ultimately choosing to play his own Lancelot. And then swinging in for a cool six. We're going to go ahead and see a bloody break on there. Makes it so it's not necessarily as concerning that we didn't invest in the Regulus. Um, you know, the potential for the removal. You know, you pay three, get killed by a two drop at instant speed. That would have been probably pretty bad. Um, but, you know, you got to give it a try. And Justin still has Will up for potential crackback. We are seeing the Leviton play here, which is going to float some Will and get a Stranger uh, and a 7-1. Melgus is going to go ahead and do Judgment here. Oh, not a Stranger. Get a Judgment for free and get the 7-1. Our free Stranger off the top here is Amon. Not the one that Paul wanted to see. 
Paul now has to determine whether or not he wants to pay some life to draw some cards and bump up Amon without having swiftness that's a little suboptimal. It's not necessarily too bad if based on what other stranger he might have gotten in his hands. Um, if he had had the uh, way to just force everything to swing in. Um, or if he god zarts and gets lucky there. Swings in for the 7, swings in for the 10. Uh, we're going to attempt to see a bloody break to respond uh, to the attack of Melgus. Before Melgus dies, we're going to see the god art. Get a random stranger hit that looks like Chuchelane, which does not help because we haven't paid the life uh, for Amon. I think they missed the life get spend here as well, so Paul should actually be at 3,300 life. So not the greatest Melgus flip turn. Um, two strangers that neither of them have swiftness is not what Melgus wants to be doing if it wants to be going fast. So this does give Justin a potential to kind of push back, especially if he has another Leviton in hand himself. He could just kind of punish and push back, do a similar kind of thing, potentially hit better strangers. Paul is completely tapped out at this point, so he might as well try it. Um, we are going to see uh, that play. Looks like we're going to... Get a stranger and do judgment, potentially. Getting a stranger and doing judgment here might be just a better option, especially since he has the two floating will. Um, so he could flip Melgus, play a stranger with... The oh, no, he's going to get... Oh, he's not even going to do judgment. He's going to get a stranger and the 7-1. And then call stone. Oh, interesting choice. I can see the justification for it, especially since, you know, you don't necessarily know if you're going to be able to push through um, what's on the board, and maybe just drawing cards is just better for you in the moment. Using some of the floating, tapping our regalia, we have Regulus out on the board. We should still at this point have um, one floating. Regulus is going to try to swing in for a grand. Paul says, that's fine. I'll take it. Go down to 23. Looking in hand, looks like we have a Percival as well. We're going to go ahead and use Bloody Break using the extra floating to get rid of the Chucha lane and then try to swing in for seven, saying if you're going to block, we're going to both lose, we're going to lose A-mode. And so taking him down to 16. So overall, pretty smooth move there from Justin. Sets up a board state, threatening some lethal. Um, you know, we're not quite sure exactly what Paul has to maybe close out the game for that extra 2,400. Paul having access to five total will at this point. So at this point in time, a Shakti plus an Awakening is only 16. A Shakti plus Awakening is actually lethal here because Shakti would have Swiftness and Amon can swing. So if he's got it, that takes care of it. He's going to swing in for 7. Uh, and then ultimately, oh, he just has Burn for 8 and then Double Thunder. So that's 18 plus 7. So that's 25. So Paul just has what he needs in hand to close out for the burn damage for game. And so for that, we move on to game 2. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So that is one of the interesting things about Melgus is just, um, especially with the modal spells like Awakening of the Flame King, it can kind of just be what you need it to be. Um, and the fact that it burns for eight is a pretty significant amount, um, but also can be used to like clear boards, cheat in dudes, all kinds of good stuff. Um, Melgus definitely just has a lot of ways to say, oops, you're dead, um, based on how much life they are able to chip away in the early game. Which is one of the reasons why Adam kind of has such a good Melgus matchup, because it has that early game life gain that it's just incidentally doing. Uh, and then eventually hit Zeus Alice's, which Melgus can't answer. So turn one for Paul. Um, Justin choosing to take the, the draw. 
Um, Paul swinging in with that uh, 500 damage from the um, Fox after Paul burns himself for four with the enter effect. Down comes a um, Regalia on turn one. I think probably the best moments here are to get the 7-1 and then get a Stranger. And you can use the 7-1 to kill the Fox. Would probably be my best play. You're not terribly concerned, especially since Paul hurt himself and you'd rather just have the removed creature. Um, ultimately choosing to go for the attack, though, um, which I think is an interesting choice there from Justin. Giving Melgus more things to be able to punch him in the face when we know that there's burn hiding in the deck, I don't think is necessarily the best choice, um, but it is what it is. After swinging in with the Firefox, taking out combat early, we're going to go ahead and play um, Red Percival. Do see a Caduceus there. Um, Caduceus might be important if he wants the Judgment next turn, since he doesn't have any black right now, and it would give him a Regalia to be able to play to do it. Um, not sure how many Majors he's playing, but it is something to kind of help make up for the fact that he hit double white, uh, double red white. And then ultimately choosing to pass the turn there. Justin calling his second stone. The problem is that Caduceus can't produce what you need for the god art of Melvis, so it kind of makes it a suboptimal early game flip. Lancelot coming in again here. You see there's the Awakening of the Flame King in hand. Um, I think a potential play here could have been to hold... Um, playing anything on this turn just kind of like play a one drop and pass uh to set up for a potential awakening of the flame king on the next turn um and then she did something especially since you can kill red percy and um red percy and the fox while also putting a body on board as opposed to just swinging in for damage paul ultimately choosing to just in the upkeep play a thunder uh, after taking the um, Lancelot damage, he's like, it's fine, I don't really care about it. We are going to use the CAD to then flip for a free judgment. Um, hoping, you know, the God Art obviously doesn't matter this turn. Um, now, if a Bloody Break came down here, that would be pretty effective because he wouldn't get God Art until he'd be locked out of it. And potentially, based on what this flip is with Amon, or with uh, Melgus, this could be really good. Because Melgus also can't swing this turn. So down comes another Amon, which is just really not great um <laughs> for paul here choosing especially since he's already taken a lot of damage already um melgus not being able to swing um you know a, a bloody break here just kills him locks him out of the god art he got barely any value off of the flip uh and is not um doesn't really have what he needs on board to deal with that lancelot so paul in a potentially good position to be able to push back thinking about how much life he wants to consider paying. Chooses to pay the 7, goes down to 16, so we can draw another card. Maybe to see if he can draw a Leviton. Uh, does see a Bloody Break, which is pretty effective. But again, I'm not sure what he has that's a sort of mage art to be able to play with the Caduceus. Swings in for the four now, swings in for two, takes it, goes down to 2,000 even. So if there's a Bloody Break in hand here, and there is, it looks like, Bloody Break to kill the Melgus, get that off the board. This is potentially, um, if Justin has access to another Leviton here, uh, potentially a really good way for him to just burst out and finish the game off here, where we can take it to with game three. Ultimately, does not seem to have it. So we're going to call Stone again. Well, it looks like a Marsh of the Dead in hand. So a Shakti coming down here. Oh, with the Awakening of the Flame King, that is actually just lethal if he casts it. Um... Oh, twin, twin Spirals. 
Uh, Awakening of the Flame King to deal double damage. Both modes to deal 16. He's got that Twin Adder Spiral to go ahead and let him gain six. So just enough to be able to survive um, the Shakti will die, unfortunately. He'll go down to just a cool even six because he did it in response. Um, the possible better plan line there would have been to swing with the Shakti first. Or swing with the Lancelot, get that six damage, um, or force the block. Swing with the Shakti, and then when he tries to cancel to kill the Shakti, then you just have the lethal there. So it is a little bit of a misplay that unfortunately looks like it might cost just in the game um, based on what we see oh, a third white-red zone for Paul. Not what he wants to see, but there's potential options here just to push through for what he needs. Currently threatening 13, 15 damage on board. And so at that point, all he needs is another Thunder. Um, choosing to swing for two, swing for four, blocks with the Lance a lot. Do have the Bloody Break in hand, but we don't have a way to cast it. Let's say that's okay. Firefox is dead. Amon swinging in for 7, takes him down to 11. And then the question is, how much burn damage does Paul have in hand? We know he's got a Thunder, so he's got to find 6 more. Percival coming down here. Sees another Percival. And at that point in time, uh, that's all we need. Because um, the Percival... Um, oh, nope, choosing not to. So plays the red fox burns himself to go down to 200 life has the pump up can swing in for that extra five take him down to six red percy can't swing this turn but can just banish to deal two take him down to four He's like wait i don't have either one of the percy's can just banish to take him down to two and then the Thunder to close out the game. So that is it. So Paul capitalizing on a missed um, play line, uh, not seeing the play line for Lethal from Justin to take the game 2-0. Hope you guys liked this little fun match from two of my locals. Um, deck profiles will be up for later this week uh, if we can get them, especially for the fast Malgus, just to see what first Malgus kind of looks like. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.